Then... Yeah, what? Oh, oh shit. Here we go again. Oh. All right, Jimmy, oh, folks. Oh, we're back at it again with the final Finn relationship in Adventure Time. That's right. We're talking about... Huntress Wizard. Though they don't take up a lot of time in the series home stretch, I think Huntress Wizard and Finn just really exemplify not just Finn's character growth, but the evolution of the show in general. And I also appreciate how it fleshed out a fan favorite design. Because yes, Huntress Wizard was in this show, but we really didn't know jack about her until she started dating Finn. And near the end, I'll also dive into the contentious conclusion that is Adventure Time's finale. And if a show that put so much emphasis on Finn's love life could end without giving us a solid answer to who he would end up with. From a simp to a man, let's talk about shipping in Adventure Time. Now, for context for how Finn got it to this point, check out my other videos on the crash and burn that was Finn dating Flame Princess. Because while Finn dating Huntress Wizard is a long ways away, that journey to him meeting her really starts here. Before jumping off a cliff into trauma, then finding new ways for Finn to hate himself. Finn's breakup with Flame Princess changed him but it changed the show as well. Taking a break from the heavy shipping focus on Finn to explore more world building and overall making Finn long for his youth. Adventure Time got weird. Not in that things got wackier or more insane, but more existential. With entire episodes dedicated to abstract ideas, giving messages that are never explicitly stated, leaving it to the viewer to sort out their own experience. Like the Hall of Egress, where Finn was trapped in a dungeon he could only escape by closing his eyes, but opening them caused him to jump back to the start. And he would just do this for months. He would return home to Jake and Bimo, be blind to the world, grow comfortable, believing that this time he's truly free, only to open his eyes and come right back to the dungeon. Rinse, repeat, for months. Yeah, I'm not saying the series after season 5 exists solely to fuck with its characters, but it's certainly not giving them a vacation either. I mean, Finn, between his breakup and meeting Huntress Wizard, gets put through the ringer, and life just kept kicking him while he's down. He finds out his birth father is still alive, a manipulative douche with zero interest in him, but alive. Finn rips his own arm off trying to hold on to him, gets depressed, hits his hoe phase in Breezy, where to perk up his flower, he starts kissing every woman in sight. It's all meaningless though, as he's just doing this for personal gratification and loses interest almost immediately, before getting his arm back from the crying bee woman who became a queen for him. There's a message here about throwing yourself into meaningless sex, and some other thing that's up to your interpretation. But well, Finn got molested by LSP, so fuck him, I guess. Don't be scared, Finn. Lumpy's on lifeguard duty. He then proceeded to lose his life savings, kill himself, a past version of himself, who is now trapped in a sword forever, fought Cthulhu and Marceline's backstory, before ending up in that hall of egress, because life is filled with lessons, and Finn just gets held hostage by it till he learns them. And after all of this, all the insanity, we finally get to the episode that brought us Huntress Wizard and Finn. Now, I can't undersell what a curveball this pairing was, as up to this point, HW served as a cool-looking, but thoroughly disposable background character. She appeared a few times, doesn't do much else. And she was such a minor character, she basically existed in the realm of near-crack pairings. With zero screen time with Finn, giving us no reason to think that she would get shipped with the blonde boy wonder. This all changed with Flute Spell. Now, over three years after his breakup with Flame Princess, the new character finally joined the fight. The episode proper has Jake being his dumbass self, having no idea what his brother is doing for two weeks, only to find out from the local worm that Finn has a new lady friend. Huntress Wizard! Yep. He claims that he's just trying to help her out, find her old master slash possible ex-boyfriend by playing his flute. What the are you talking about? He's just trying to help a gal out. But Jake's dumpster fiber brain refused to believe it. Like me, as we're given the deets for how they first met, we realize, yeah, this whole episode was designed for shipping fuel. From their first meeting being her finding Finn naked in the forest, which she doesn't seem to mind, grabbing his arm and telling him he's exactly what she's been looking for. Write that down, write that down! <laughs> this would usually be about, well, I don't know, everything the fandom would need to work with, but then decides to keep going, with HW being the hookup for Finn's first hit. Tripping balls on a higher plane of existence, he meets the other guy who compares Huntress Wizard to a predator. 
Okay, we don't know her age, but I swear that came out wrong. After that though, it's time to pork. Hey! Good work. The song still doesn't work, so Jake just tells them to duet. Summoning the guy. Attracting forces come and go. It's the way of the world. I still can't tell if you guys dated. And then thankfully we get the reveal that this isn't a platonic thing for Finn, but it wasn't for her either. What? Oh. My flute spell was for you too. You're an exceptional beast and you have great hair. And not gonna lie, this felt amazing for so many reasons. Like they don't get together in this episode, or any of them. She's kind of not ready to date anyone, but she definitely likes Finn, believing that they're two exceptional beasts, but that means they can't get together as that's a secret of n normal people, which... Uh, that's real dumb. And that's all the episode. Finn is into a new girl, she's not ready to be in a relationship, and he's okay with that. It peppers in a bunch of small moments so you know the reveal's coming, with Jake serving as the perfect audience insert as we rabidly demand for more content. It leaves the door open for something else down the road. Finn doesn't chase her like he did with Flame Princess or go sob in the corner like with PB. This episode really just goes to show how much this kid has grown. There are even being hints that Finn has a lingering trauma from his last relationship, as rather than just asking the girl out, he buried his feelings and said he was just trying to be her friend. The kid saw how pursuing what he wanted caused such a disaster last time, so he overcorrected. When he saw that she liked him, he was fine with letting her go when she showed that she wasn't ready. And Huntress Wizard, oh Huntress Wizard, you majestic stallion. This episode was a shot to the arm for the fandom. The shipping nonsense that had so consumed the show had kind of died down by this point. But to have this renewed attention brought a lot of people back on board. Hunter's Wizard was a non-character before this, so they basically had to create a whole new character for just this episode. And it was all great, from her straightforward bordering on blunt personality, but sprinkled in with these small hints of a softer side that comes off as just a little bit awkward. When she first meets Finn, she demands answers and threatens to shoot him, and he tells her to try as he is quote, really agile when he's nude. And I love that because it just shows that they are on a similar wavelength in a way that Finn really didn't have with any of his previous love interests. Flame Princess could be passionate and fun like Finn and would absolutely throw down, but she wasn't a warrior. She liked destroying things, but didn't get that obtuse enjoyment of confronting a challenge and cutting it down. And this is where our LARP couple were in perfect sync, with Finn being the adventurous swordsman while HW the consummate archer. They made for a perfect battle couple, with Finn's dumb but giddy approach to adventuring meshing well with HWs, who may be trying just a bit too hard at sounding philosophical. He's a bit of an idiot, while she's better at hiding it and is still a bit of a dork. Having dedicated her entire personality into being a huntress, hanging out and talking isn't her strong suit, which just makes it adorable. As we see when her birthday gift for Finn is a literal elk's heart, saying it has metaphorical and emotional significance while giving Finn this giant smile. It's not a gift you'd expect, but it's undeniably her. And that's just what I love. She's such a departure from the previous love interest that she feels like such her own character and has such her own spin on everything. And I really have to applaud the writers for establishing a character so well in one episode, shooting her from background to a major, semi-major character. She's always got her eyes on the prize, but that caused her to ignore what's around her and her feelings, with her own fear of growing soft adding some fun drama as we wonder if this would truly be the end of the couple, and would we see HW open up some more and learn caring isn't a weakness, or would they just keep it casual? Overall, it was a great first impression, and I was dying to see more content with her in it. Well, this sucks. So yeah, Huntress Wizard kinda disappears. Like, it'd be two whole seasons before she would have a major appearance again. In the meantime, more Finn trauma. We got to see Finn lose his sword self, get it back only for it to become a grass version of himself known as Fern. Finn discovered where he came from, his mother is a computer now, and returned home only to find out Fern has gone crazy and tried to kill him. I know that look. You just killed someone. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Huntress Wizard would return in the 10th and final season to help Finn get out of his post I killed Fern funk. The resulting guilt made him unable to kill anything. HW had to snap him out of it by putting her own life in danger to force Finn to choose between his guilt and ethics or her. 
We both know you're totally in love with me. And we start to see a bit more of a casual relationship start to form up. She's at Finn's birthday. That's where she gives him the present. She's there to watch him get his ass kicked by Fern. She's not really that important, but she's also here and you can see that something is building between them. They may not be dating, dating, but they're getting close. But that's kind of just it for them. Three episodes of actual HW content. And after that, she kind of just appears in out of frame. Like she only really has two major appearances. And honestly, I was pretty okay with that. And it's the same reason I was okay with Adventure Time never confirming who Finn ended up with, if anyone. Whether it was Come Along With Me or Distant Lands, we never got that hard confirmation, which understandably pissed a lot of people off. Because many of people's earliest memories of Adventure Time was the first half of the series, where shipping was everything. And Finn's crushes played such a large role in the narrative. A lot of fans fell off Adventure Time as it kept Kept chugging along, so for them and a lot of longtime people to not get the answer to a question that the series spent so much time on, like yeah, of course that's gonna cause a lot of disappointment. I felt a little bit let down too. But looking back now, I realized that Adventure Time had long since grown past that early golden age of shipping drama. Finn had grown out of obsessing over every girl he had a crush on. Finn's story after Flame Princess was one of self-discovery and growing from a hormonal teen to a young man who realized the futility of war. He still had crushes and relationships, but those relationships didn't define him. It was his experiences, finding his family, losing his arm, making his peace with Fern. He moved away from the blissful power fantasy of being a hero, where all the ladies want him and he could solve all of his problems with violence, and moving into the complicated yet fascinating web of misery and introspection that we call adulthood, where simple solutions are few and far between, where villains aren't just two-dimensional parodies. And I found that growth amazing. And while I do wish we could have gone a hint to Finn's final date, I'm content with the journey that brought us there and the friends we made along the way. And it's in that mindset that I found Hunch's Wizard to be perfect for the limited amount of time she was in the story, as everything about her paints her in an elusive yet cool light, with her own emotional hangups keeping her from committing to anything. But as we saw with her trying to find her old, let's just call him a roommate for now, Huntress Wizard still craved companionship. She's not a solitary hunter, but her fear of growing soft keeps her from settling down, as becoming content with Finn is anathema to her stay strong mindset. She wasn't ready to change her lifestyle, but as we saw, she slowly started to let Finn into hers. I found this to be a fair compromise as we saw two compatible people understand one another in their own quirky way. It may not have been the kind of relationship I would cap off the shipping roller coaster we saw in the show, but for Finn, this was the perfect fit. And if nothing else, at least I had great fan art to help me cope, which is all fantastic. And I guess that's kind of the end of my Adventure Time shipping videos. I mean, I could talk about Ice King and Betty, but that's a bit of a nightmare. I think if I did one more, I would talk about... Oh yeah, that one the finale, um, LSP and Lemon Grab. Acceptable! <laughs> Who the hell knew we needed that in our lives? And like, it was insane. It came out of nowhere, no buildup, and like nothing else happened in that thing anyway. Yeah, no shit I'm making a video about bubbling. Like, share, and subscribe, folks. Bye!